Live from Santa Clara, California. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Q. Covering Next Work 2015. Brought to you by Juniper Networks. Now your host, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Silicon Valley for a special presentation of theCUBE here at Juniper Networks Customer Summit. This is theCUBE, our flagship program, where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. Joe Stu Miniman, lead analyst on infrastructure and cloud at wikibon.com. Our next guest is Ron Winward with Server Central, Director of Network Engineering. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you guys, great Before to be Before we came Thank on, you. we're like, I can talk networking, I can talk, let's talk networking, because yeah. Juniper <laughs> is in the middle of a major transformation. Yeah. They're horizontal, scalable platform really powering a lot of innovation. Sure. And they don't have their own cloud, but they're playing with all the clouds. Um, but all the action right now is happening in that middleware kind of cloud data center market sure. where I got an infrastructure that I need to architect for software-driven, software-centric yep. architecture. What's your take on the landscape with Juniper and just the overall data center architectures today? So uh, in networking and uh, service provider, you know, the old antiquated way was uh, you run a cable somewhere, if I have to reach somewhere that is uh, across a data center, maybe across a couple data centers or a metro, I've got to get cross connects, I've got to rely on people, I have to deploy, I've got to maybe deploy ex expensive equipment, or maybe I have to reposition this into my, my cabinet. Um, and that's, that's, it takes a long time, it's expensive, it's not always viable, so um, now we're looking to the network to maybe um, be able to provision, um, you know, in, uh, infrastructure across the, the backbone, maybe not itself, but um, you know, the ability to do that um, and, and reach anywhere in the network with the control of um, you know, the operator, being able to build the network, click um, you know, provision services across a, a metro instead of having to redeploy equipment everywhere. So Talk about the dynamic over the past five years. Obviously the cloud movement you've seen with DevOps, software development now, since the iPhone came out, we were just talking about earlier about mobility and internet things, really exploding with data, new types of applications, more surface area for security. Sure. Talk about what's changed in the past five years, because it, five years ago it was relatively stable, and five years earlier, 10 years ago today, from today, you know, provision, rack and stack, things are clean, yeah. things are good, we've got our apps running, yep. got off branch offices, now it's like, whoa. Yeah, so for a long time, networking was very stale. Um, it's very exciting again, and I think that that comes from the customer base. I think that it comes from the innovation in the service provider space and the, the providers of the hardware, the manufacturers. So um, the applications you talked about, apps have, have exploded, and those people are um, server people who are used to, I'm able to see real-time analytics, I'm real able to see real-time data and make insightful decisions based on what I can see out of the application. That hasn't really existed until recently in the network, and we're starting to see that now. So um, the customers are driving the need for, I want to see metrics that I can use to make insightful decisions or maybe identify a problem more quickly and react more quickly or maybe use automation to um, <coughs> react before I can even have a human look at something to, you know, to mitigate a problem, let's say, or, a, or an attack, let's say. So um, the the... The, the previous five years coming up to now have been kind of a feeling out where this stuff is going to go. And I think as an industry, maybe in the past year to you know 18 months, we really have started to gra grab hold of where we're going to go. And now we're starting to see, now we're really starting to figure out what's going to be next. So, think, so, Ron, I'm wondering if you can sketch out for us a little bit about what your network looks like, how many people you have, and you know wh what's kind of day-to-day? What are the activities that kind of keep you busy and where's the innovation sure. happening? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Server Central is a data center and co-location company. Um, that means a lot of things to a lot of people, but primarily it means we're a place to put your servers, your critical infrastructure, your critical data, and a place to have it reliably out there on the internet on redundant power, redundant internet service, and that's the start of it, right? So then it's maybe you're a small business or maybe you're a multi-million dollar financial company, maybe you're somewhere in between or maybe you're a web startup. Um, Server Central is a company that can really tailor to your needs for I can provide you with managed switch, I can provide you with managed firewall, maybe I'm providing you with transit and you know, really complex BGP service. Um, or maybe I'm just a place for you to, uh, with, with great power and great hands for, you know, and you operate your own network. So Server Central really does all of that. 
Uh, we are our partner of Juniper. We have been, um, uh, we're a VAR of Juniper. We've been Juniper users for at least 10 years. Um, we use uh, Juniper MX as the core of our uh, routing. Every customer who is a Colo customer connects with uh, redundant connectivity to two diverse Juniper MXs. If you're a customer who has managed switch or managed firewall, that's done on Juniper EX or QFX. Firewall uh, is done on um, SRX. So we really, if, if there's a need in the network and if customers are asking for it, we're going to look to Juniper to, um, you know, to see if there's a solution that they can provide. And we're a, you know, we're a, we're a, a very strong partner and, and love the power of Juniper and Junos. Yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting space. So you, you've got both the, you know, kind of bring your stuff and we can hold it or we, we can deliver you a service. Absolutely. Um, and either way, it sounds like you're handling the network for them. I mean, one of the questions we have is, you know, so, some of these big network changes that are going on, yeah. uh, getting the skill set to, you know, program it, automate it. Uh, you know, sure. curious to hear what you're doing with SDN, but, yeah. um, you know, if, if I'm the average mid-range <laughs> customer, it's like, that's probably a lot more heavy lifting than I'm willing to do, yeah. um, and, and, and therefore, you know, I, I go to somebody that, that can handle it better. So exactly right. So what, what are you seeing, and what's the pitch to your customers? So um, the pitch is um, we are a, a provider that can provide you anything, you know, bespoke custom network solutions. That can be just internet, reliable internet access, but maybe, again, you're a, a web startup, and you're full of developers, but you don't have anybody that really can build and maintain and monitor your network. That's where we come in. The same people who built our network can build your network, and you know it can be that. Um, it can be maybe you, you are a you have a small project and you're a big company, and you don't have the time to, to deal with the build out or the uh, you know the configuration of your equipment. Um, my team can do that. You know our company can do that. So it really is, it is a very custom. You know, whatever you need, we can make something custom to fit the bill. Okay, and I'm curious, do you see customers starting on one side of the business and shifting to the other or shifting back? You know, what, what's that dynamic look like? Yeah, so, so a lot of what we see, because we do offer managed switch and managed firewall, so customers who have stayed with us and grown with us for a long time, we maybe have deployed their initial infrastructure, but they learn more about networking as they go along because these are very bright, talented people who are building great companies, right? And they're... Um, learning more about the network and learning, okay, well maybe I can handle th some of this myself. Um, so we're seeing people um, move to being able to, maybe they don't want to control the network, or, but maybe they want the, the analytics and the information that, that can help them decide the performance of their network and how to grow it you know, uh, going forward. We also do see metal, you know, traditional colocation going to hybrid cloud. That's you know, the past year and a half, two years we've seen that. and so. People want that, um, I don't want to deploy server metal servers anymore. I, I have my need for metal servers, I have my need for virtualization, and I need a way for you guys, Server Central, to marry the two networks together. And you know that's been a, um, something that we're using um, you know, specifically with some of the Contrail and SDN stuff too. Yeah, so w one of the big trends we see is customers are looking to access you know, more in different types of data. So sure. some, some what they own, some they're uh, tying into other cloud services, sometimes they're doing things in the public cloud. H how does that tie into what yeah, you do? Yeah, so um, again, it's it back to that traditional infrastructure and co-location type model. Uh, but as you said, maybe I want to spin up 100 VMs somewhere in another cloud provider like an Amazon. Um, we have capacity to those providers where we can provide them with a VPLS connection to our handoff to them and maybe get them dedicated service. Um, maybe they just use our own existing connectivity to them, like maybe it's not a dedicated cross-connect, maybe you're just using our Amazon peering, for example. So, um, you know, to have the ability to get customers to wherever they need on our Juniper network, you know, it's, it's Juniper that empowers, uh, that enables that for us. So about managed uh, services, because this is a big deal now. You can manage cloud, I got managed infrastructure. The OpEx, CapEx thing is happening, we know yeah. that. The economics are there, there's incentives. Cloud has economic deployment incentives. You guys are in that managed business, right? Sure. You help customers there. Yeah. Uh, what's the big trend in that market? Is it, is it just capacity by the clients to go there? Is it budget, timing, what would the need? What's holding the world back from having turnkey managed services, almost like we have electricity today. You almost think yeah. of it like, soon it's going to be that way. Yeah. You're in the front lines, what are you seeing? Uh, so we see people who uh, maybe want to start out maybe with metal, or we see the other side of that. We see customers who want to start out with virtualization just to maybe 
put some of their applications or try some things here and there. Um, and what we actually see is a combination of both. Eventually, you know, people, there is a need for metal and there is a need for virtualization. So customers will see um, grow into both sides of that and, tr and really create a fabric for, of both sides for, for customers. It's not, they're not mutually exclusive. Metal and, and exactly all that right. stuff's happening. Yeah. But ultimately they're kind of, I won't say groping, but they're engineering, they're iterating to ultimately a hybrid cloud market. Exactly. I mean, yeah. which is not a product. You can't buy yeah. a hybrid cloud. You kind of kind of engineer it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so um, there is a challenge there when I have my, my, my metal infrastructure and I've got my cloud infrastructure and how do I connect the two together and make them on the same subnet and you know all that stuff that we rely on networking to stitch together and and um, you know uh, to make that ubiquitous access for everybody in the network. What about OpenStack? What's your take on that? I just want to throw this, it just popped in my head so I just throw it out there. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's one of the technologies that is um, powerful in the market. We are not using it, uh, but Are customers asking are. for it or not really, or not in your wheelhouse or? Not for us. Um, we have a very, you know, a specific um, type of deployment. Um, it's not so much an OpenStack. There are, um, there are open virtualization platforms that we'll yeah. use. There's yeah. some custom yeah. things, there's some VMware things, so there's, you know, it's um, You guys have a lot of services, so I want to just kind of take a step back. You got the, the products and you got some managed services. What's the hottest stuff that you guys have? What's the, what's the big sellers? I mean, what are people buying? So, the, A, people come to Server Central because of our ability to provide resilient networking, high performance networking, knowledgeable staff, and then the things that they're buying are um, the, big virtualization platforms, they're buying managed switch, managed router. Um, the managed classic fire. stuff. The classic stuff, but um, I think a lot of it is also for um, our you know, ability as a service provider and our care for customers. So it's, it's classic stuff, but everybody's network is not classic. Yeah, everybody's network is in. unique to themselves. That's and I that's would agree. That's what are you guys known for? A better, better, better question. What are you guys known for? We're known for uh, reliable networks. We're known for knowing what we know, or, you know, doing a good job of what we yeah. do, um, and we're known for uh, uptime, uptime yeah. and performance. It's interesting. You become what you're known for. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. And so that's your company's DNA. Yeah, absolutely. How about the cloud? How do you see the cloud in the future for you guys? I mean, taking that to the next level. Uh, what are some of the challenges you guys see, and what what opportunities? What gets you excited? Yeah. Um, so it's that. That room in the data center, right? Room as in where am I going to put things in the data center? I have a, stack, a cabinet of hypervisors and then, a, then I have another cabinet of hypervisors and then maybe I have to go into another computer room. The cloud is that footprint, right? I've got to stitch all of that together. So um, the things that we're looking at with Contrail, Contrail's in our labs, um, you know, QFX is something that we're using to, to, to build this, you know, stitch this network together. So where are we going with the cloud? It's going to be, how do I provide this, how can I touch anything in these huge data centers and make it one, you know, one footprint, <coughs> one thing that is, in, that yeah. is a, an overlay that is invisible to the customer. My final question is, share with the folks out that are watching that, that have a data center, they, they have all this pressure, um, they need a partner. Um, what advice would you give them to take that first step, almost like, do they jump into the deep end and like lash around for a while? Do they go into the low end of the pool and kind of put their floaty on, go out to yeah. the networks? I mean, it's all kinds of different approaches and sure. yeah. how they attack the yeah. future. Yeah, I say. What would you say? Interview the people that you're talking to, do some research, um, look at companies like Server Central, look at companies who will um, allow you to talk to their engineers, the people that are going to build your network, let them, so Put their know. toe in the low end, they were jumping the deep end, what would you recommend? I, I kind of different, depends, right? Yeah, I, I, th I say it depends. I say go on data center tours, see the facilities that you're going to go, um, you know, yeah. be partnering with, and, um, you know, I don't think that, it, it, it's, not a, it's not a viable thing for everybody to just jump in head first with all of their data center needs into, uh, you know, a place. So, when you are do, when you do do that, you know, get to know the people behind the company, get to know the people who will support you. My final, final question, is sure. I just one just jumped in my head, was Jennifer, um, Jennifer Blatnick said earlier that the new kinds of innovators are revolutionaries. You see those guys all the time because you're, in, again, you're in the front lines. Yeah. What's the mindset of that revolutionary in the customer base, the ones who really want to make the change happen, the ones that are pushing, hitting, hitting that brick wall yeah. hard, breaking it down? They hold you accountable. They're the people who, um, look to you as a partner and not your service provider. They look to you as your partner and 
if you know they hold you accountable if if they need you and they look at you as part of your staff as part of their staff right if somebody mm. signs up for a managed service they expect you to act as an employee just like any of their other employees so you know those people who are the innovators um, you know the the really fun interesting customers they you know they're going to hold you accountable too and and we expect that and you know that's that's part of what we do they expect best. what they want they, they want, they're hard charging. Yeah. They want you to be hard charging, but reliable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Ron Windward, thanks so much for coming on. He was sharing thanks the so insight much. on the networking stuff from the, uh, from the trenches, from out in the front lines of the networks. This is theCUBE, sharing the data here at the Juniper Customer Summit. We'll be right back with more after this short break.